Hey everyone, it's Scott from CertMedia.com. In this video, we're covering the Speed Booster Pack. It is a plugin I see all the time, and quite honestly, I don't know why. So let's jump into it and explain what it is for. Kind of like Perf Matters, it is a companion plugin to an existing cache solution. Um, it's basically Perf Matters, but kind of like a free version. Uh, so you get a bunch of simple functionality, remove query strings, emoji scripts, short links, all these things that together can save a little few bytes, but not that many. Pretty much these few options do nothing for your performance. Uh, this can help, but can cause breakages. So if you are using remove jQuery or migrates, remember that this can cause breakages on some websites. Uh, disable heartbeat will disable the heartbeat API, and this can also cause issues. So I'm more inclined to just increase the heartbeat frequency. You can limit your number of post revisions per post. So you can say your each post can have a maximum of three post revisions. You could choose to say it and set an auto save interval based on a number of minutes. By you can set it to one and up to five minutes. Um, I would set it to something like two minutes, just so that way it's half as much, but it's not so long that it would be of concern of them not being saved. Under the advanced section, you do get some interesting features. Um, you get the ability to optimize Google Fonts, and as it mentions here, this feature effectively gathers all the Google Fonts in URLs and combines them into a single URL, and adds the famous, and then it disappears. It adds Fonts Display Swap. It will enable instant.page, which is a link preloader very simple to the Flying Pages plugin that we covered before. You hover over a link and it will begin prefetching that page, which can reduce the amount of time it takes for that page to respond from, say, 500 milliseconds to like 2 milliseconds, which can be quite useful. You can disable your cart fragments, and as it mentions here, it will disable the cart fragment script, which will override all caching function to update the cart totals on each page. Basically, it's just a warning. If you use this feature and you disable the cart fragments JS and you're using a page caching plugin, you then need to exclude the pages from cache because the cart will no longer update. Um, you could just remove WooCommerce scripts from non-WooCommerce pages. I recommend checking this option. Disable the password strength meter. I recommend just checking this option anyways because it's a terrible feature. It's like 400 kilobytes of compressed JavaScript. It's so much. Um, remove Google Maps. Uh, if you have Google Maps on the page, you can remove it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend checking this solely because if you were loading Google Maps and you're actually using the script, you most certainly don't want to remove the uh, remove it from the front end. You can remove the REST API links and all RSS feed links. These will not really do much from your performance point of view. Um, so I wouldn't really worry too much. You could choose to minify the HTML. Don't use this if you have a caching plugin. Uh, lazy load. Enable lazy loading of images, videos, and iframes. Uh, basically, it's like Rocket Lazy Load. It's a little bit less effective than Rocket uh, WordPress Rocket's lazy loading, um, but it's an option if you're already using this. I don't recommend using the JavaScript option, especially if you're using a caching plugin. I just don't recommend doing it at all. And this will just allow you to move the, J the J uh, JS to the footer, but keep in mind this will not deal with inline scripts. This can obviously lead to breakages, so I don't recommend using it. CSS options. Please never do any of these options. These are when you get into the really silly um, optimization features, and I see this all the time because users use this plugin, is they inline all their CSS, and then, wow, you have no render blocking CSS, and it's amazing, and um, you have no more unused CSS, and all those warnings disappear in PageSpeed Insights, and then your performance score doesn't change, and um, that's because you just shifted the problem to something that's much worse. While the CSS is technically no longer a render blocking file, it now needs to process all that CSS anyway, so you didn't really save all that much. And the downside of it of not being in a file means that it's no longer cacheable by the browser. So the browser can no longer cache the CSS, it now needs to re-download this humongous HTML document on every single page load. That's why inlining all your CSS is a terrible, 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 terrible practice unless you have a very, 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 very small amount of CSS. And that would only apply to websites that are basically custom coded by scratch and they have well developed their website. But if you're using something like Bootstrap and you built a Bootstrap based website for some reason, don't do it. It's going to look quite 
hideous in the header and it's going to take up a large amount of CSS. And if you do enable these options, please don't move it into the footer because then you're going to get a flash of unstyled content where your whole page is going to look absolutely hideous because now there's no CSS for the browser to render and it's just going to put all the HTML and then go to do the style sheets and the, uh, the styling in the footer. It's going to cause for a very bad user experience. Uh, you can choose to preload assets, which means it'll go ahead and add the link rel preload tag and you can choose to give the URLs here. Um, this is something I wish more plugins had functionality for because quite honestly, it's not really common and the only plugin that I'm aware of that actively uses this is WordPress Rocket and 3.6 added it for fonts. They don't allow you to preload any other files. You can enable a CDN rewrite feature ripped completely out of uh, Perf Matters. It's exactly the same. Even has the same defaults. And then uh, Google Analytics, you could choose to add in locally. This is basically the exact same thing as Perf Matters. Exactly the same settings. Um, just in a little bit of a different wrapper and a lot more annoying warnings. Keep in mind though, if you use this option, um, you're not able to then, it won't just delete your old, your other Google Analytics scripts. You have to delete those still. This just hosts it locally. This is in stark contrast to WordPress Rocket, which will automatically rewrite URLs that are from Google Analytics and serve those locally. This doesn't do that. This only allows you to host them locally. So now we're gonna talk about why I don't recommend this plugin. Um, number one, most of the functionality in here is quite limited. Uh, Perf Matters, which I know it's premium, and I always talk about it like I'm like kind of like a shill for them, but I don't really suggest plugins unless I actually use them. And I use Perf Matters all the time. This thing has no script manager in it. Script management is very important. If you use a script manager, you're then able to remove plugins and assets from loading on certain pages. Without that, uh, this plugin is basically just a bunch of fancy things that anybody could add with a little bit of code. And the advanced section is pretty basic. Um, I would never use any of the CSS options. I would never use any of the JavaScript options. And I personally wouldn't use the lazy load option either because I would just use it whatever's in the caching plugin. So this thing really just needs a script manager. The only good thing that it does have is the instant.page support, which is basically like flying pages, and it will automatically preload them. That's something Perf Matter should add, and it should be on their suggestion list. Um, the other issue I have with it is it honestly just takes up a whole top level item in your admin panel. Instead of going underneath the settings and then speed booster, it's now on your on your admin bar as one giant box and you can't move it. And that's a bit of a problem for me because these types of plugins, they're basically you set it and you forget it. Uh, once you set it up properly, you don't really need to modify it a whole lot unless they add a bunch of new features and it doesn't deserve a whole spot on the top of the admin bar. I would suggest just simply not using this and that is um, a hard stance to take. I would say this, if you're not able to pay for perf matters, you should use this plugin. But if you're already using a similar punk, uh, plugin like it, I personally wouldn't bother too much with it. Functionally, it's the same thing. It's just not as easy to use and it's a lot less appealing to look at and it lacks the script manager functionality. Um, but you basically get a lot of the same functions for cleanup. But one of the things I tend to do when I optimize a website is I strip out a bunch of the optimization plugins that people throw on there because a lot of them are quite useless and uh, I personally wouldn't recommend this one. And it adds a giant annoying advertisement as a notification, which is quite obnoxious. Um, it's fine though. If you're using it for the basic options, you should be fine. You don't need it. Um, and it's kind of overlaps with perf matters. You just need to worry about sh uh, trimming your stack a little bit when it comes to optimization. But solid plugin, the options are fine. I just personally, don't recommend it a whole lot because it sounds a little bit more like a marketing speech more than anything. And it's supposed to attract customers to their premium optimization service more so than it's actually an optimization plugin. And the most obvious thing is that it says optimize your page speed scores today, which this plugin can increase your page speed inside score a little bit, 
but it won't yield any large noticeable improvement. And that's just because of the limitations of this plugin. If you have any questions about it, and if you have a question about something breaking, please try turning off the CSS and JavaScript options. Never touch those, ever. Don't minify the HTML even, don't bother. Use your uh, caching plugin to handle that. It'll just save you so much headache because those plugins are designed specifically for that functionality. It's like why if Perf Matters started adding it, I wouldn't recommend you use it. There's no benefit to using it because it's gonna be the exact same functionality in a different screen with worse defaults. If you have any questions though, please feel free to like, uh, ask in the comments below and make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.